Welcome back to the Major League Gaming Guild Wars 2 Invitational. I'm Syrof, this is Blue, and on Skype we have Sean Android Buell. We saw some amazing games. We're about halfway through the round of eight right now, guys. We saw VBV versus Sync. Sync took that in a 2 0. We also just saw FML versus Pro. FML moving on to face Sync, another 2 0. Guys, uh, we're going to see Denial versus Nonstop Nonsense coming up next. But before that, we've got another game to give away, another full copy of Guild Wars 2 for you guys to enjoy and consume. We're going to throw the code up very soon so you guys can do that. But Blue, we saw an amazing 2-0 for, uh, for FML right there. Uh, kind of, let's just go over again how dominant Urantian was. Yeah, Urantian, a very interesting build as we described earlier there. He was really aggressive on those far points and really was just doing an excellent job of beating out the uh, the other Guardian that was at that point constantly. And then just constantly, we had that Lord Rush as well there, just constantly pulling out these feats of you know greatness there that really ended up almost carrying his team to victory at the end there. Absolutely. He was, and of course, Sean said this many times, but he was almost in turret mode, really. He was able to stand still and just take all that damage to the face and really shrug it off. It's a very, very strong build and very, very skillful in terms of just the actual mechanics he used there. So, guys, we're actually going into uh, to Denial versus Nonstop Nonsense now. We're in the second, uh, third game of the round of eight going into the second the semifinals after that. Um, so, let's go ahead and jump into the game and see who is here. Um, so, basically, no one's in the game yet, um, but we we do know the rosters for this team. Of course, actually, what's up? They're all they're all in the game. They just need to join their team. Yeah. We'll have them go ahead and join their teams momentarily. But guys, of course, we still have the Twitter polls going on, and of course, if you participate in this Twitter poll, you have the, a very high chance of uh, of actually getting gems, in-game gems. For those of you guys with the game, um, in-game gems are sort of the the micro transaction currency that you can get and you can spend money on but we're giving you away some tonight of course you can tweet your answers with hashtag MLG go ahead and uh, hashtag nonstop and hashtag denial are your choices the denial is actually up there that's probably the first person throwing in their, <laughs> uh, their uh, vote in there but I know if you voted there's a really high we've got a lot of gems to give away a, a very very high number that I don't know exactly off the top of my head, but it's going to be, uh, we're going to have a long night. We've got lots of giveaways, more copies of the game to give away, more gems to give away, but we also have more games to play. So let's go ahead, jump back in, and get everyone back on to their respective teams, guys. So, um, Sean, we're, we we know that uh, that Hellseth, Hellseth from Team Denial, is a very uh, notable Mesmer player in this game. He's also known for kind of being extremely mobile, able to push far points and back points and such. The hero on Forest of Nivelhelm, do you think he's going to pull out that sort of um, those sort of tricks for this map? Uh, we could see him push Farpoint. I wouldn't be surprised. He's definitely an excellent duelist. You're always probably going to see him, and, and we'll see his build shortly here, but you almost always see him on that Greatsword uh, Staff build. He loves running the Shatter builds with the Greatsword Staff and being very mobile. Um, so, yeah, he is on Mesmer again today. He did take a break for a while to play a Necromancer when they're extremely strong. But, yep, we got him on Great Sword Staff. So, we're going to see this extremely strong duelist. He's going to be able to win almost every 1v1 that he plays against. So, uh, we're going to see some interesting stuff coming out of him. Now, both these teams, we have Denial, who formerly was TCG. They've been around for such a long time. Nonstop nonsense. Again, been around for a really long time. Uh, Deny, we haven't seen in quite some time. It's been a couple months since they've been in a tournament. They've been actively playing, though. Nonstop nonsense. They recently took second place in the ESL Cup uh, just a couple weeks ago. So we know both of these teams are extremely strong. Uh, both of these teams stay pretty consistent. So it's kind of up in the air. We haven't seen a Denial in a while. So we're not sure exactly who to put our money on. That's right. Of course, uh, we should start going over builds here. Now that we have pretty much everyone from Denial and we're just waiting on one more person from uh, from NN, let's go over Freilina, Sean. She's running a Guardian build. All right, so looking at Freilina right there, uh, she's going to be running the Mace Focus with the uh, staff, running Clerics and running 0, 5, 30, 35, so that healing support build that we were going over. I Vanish is running Sword Dagger with Zerkers, and he's running 10 30 0 30 0. Lord Health Seth is running that Staff uh, Greatsword with the Berserker Amulet. He's 2020 20, 0, 0, 30, so going for that heavy Shatter build. Um, fluid. This is, yeah, Fluid. This is a Hex, right? Uh, no, it's Fluid. Oh, it's, it's Fluid. Okay. Hex. 
So fluid is running axe dagger with sword torch and a shaman's amulet. He's gonna be zero zero. 30 2020 so this is actually a little bit different for its spirit build he doesn't have the 10 points in nature magic but instead put them into beast mastery so kind of be focusing on this pets a little more and then denshi on warrior he's running that hammer with the longbow with berserker amulet and running 0 10 30 0 30 so that's it for denial and let's move over to non-stop nonsense we got Radom over there running almost the same build uh, on his warrior. He's got the longbow hammer with a soldier's amulet. He's running the same traits at 0, 10, 30, 0, 30. Epelin on Guardian running staff with mace and focus. So almost the same build. And he's running 0, 5, 30, 35. Adir, a longtime necromancer player running with staff and then uh, the scepter dagger and rabbit amulet. He's 30, 20, 0, 0, 20. So every Necromancer we've seen today has actually been on the same build. And then Guts also running that sword. He's actually running sword pistol. Uh, that We haven't seen that today. So sword pistol with his short bow. And he's running 10, 30, 0, 30, 0. And last but not least, we got Conrad Quest. Uh, again, a longtime Ranger player. Running sword dagger with axe torch and the shaman's amulet. He's running 0, 0, 30, 30, 10. So one thing to point out is north american um rangers we often see those 10 points in the marksmanship and then the eu ones we see those 10 points in the beast mastery for the faster uh, skill recharge uh just interesting tidbit to point out right there yeah and while we're on that note uh eu guardians generally tend to have this sort of this sort of spread with the five in radiance and the five in virtues and the 30 30 in valor and honor respectively it's a so it's an interesting sort of meta thing that we see between the servers here but these are both eu teams the first eu teams we've seen tonight and we're just waiting for them to get ready and play uh, as we get into the round the uh, second the third game rather of round one here at the mg guild wars 2 invitational soon. and we're about to start let's go ahead and check out that map sean yeah, waiting for the game to start. We got that map open right there, and we're gonna see maybe we got some interesting crosses or anything. Both teams stacking up their boons. We got three seconds before the gate opens. It does look like we're gonna see a little bit of crossover from Denial right there. Both Helsith and Frey. Frey's actually gonna push right towards mid, but Helsith. Uh, like I said earlier, is going to push that far point right there. Going to try and go on Radom. Yeah, let's go ahead and go in on Helseth. Of course, he's the guy who loves to do this sort of stuff. Uh, on on Fo uh, not, yeah, on Fo Fire, we see him do lots of portal play, lots of sort of really wacky aggression. He's just going to pop in there, uh, realize, going to kind of scout out and see who's coming to deal with him, and if he's going to be outnumbered here, and he will be outnumbered. Radom and Guts are here to try and deal with him. We'll see if he continues to push or not. But we do have a big fight here mid for Lena and Epelin going in on each other. I vanish you wipe. Let's go up on with him because he's in a fight behind the middle point on Adira. Adira, the captain of nonstop nonsense. He's about, uh, he's actually really low. He's actually, that's just his death shroud. I'm mistaken, but he's about 12k, 13k health now, about 20% down, and he's just trying to get to a point where he can do some conditions with those marks, Sean, which I think he'll be able to do so momentarily. Yeah, and one thing to know is Elthus, Hellseth has been keeping guts and Radom busy this whole time. When in the beginning, he actually dropped a portal right there and uh, he was able to drag Guts away, portal back, and then uh, portal back into mid again. We also have Guts going in. He was able to get the decap at mine right there. Uh, Helset is going to push onto that, try and stop him. He might be able to get it neutralized right there before it caps, but it's going to be a close fight here. Yep, he does get on point before uh, before he gets capped for the blue there. Gut's going to kind of push back here. He's going to come back in now uh, after popping that Shadow Refuge for just a second. Now he's going to pop his Vassy, and he, he may just Vassy down Helseth, but I don't think that was it. he was able to do so. And so he's going to be popping back and forth with that Shadow Step. Really great stuff. There's this sort of manual rubber band from Guts, but Helseth is just giving him no, no time to, to breathe here as he's just really, really aggressive. Yeah, Elsa trying to just kind of kite him around, get the the little amount of conditions he has from the staff, and, and just try and keep that pressure. This is actually a pretty long, drawn-out fight for two pretty bursty classes. 
Yeah, but Hellaseth is about, I don't know, 30% health, I would say. He's going to have to pull back and heal up before he can continue this. He's going to pop that null field there and uh, just allow himself to get out. But no, he's going to get chased down by Guts. Here comes a stomp on Hellaseth. Will it go through? We'll have to see if he gets interrupted before it goes through. And yeah, he does warp away just in time with, that, uh, with the deception there. We'll see if Guts will come in and do any sort of damage momentarily. But we should check out the fight here at the mid, Sean, where we do see it's just been fought over this entire time. But the side of Denial not able to get actually a point for a long time. Hen just capped for the side of blue and there's no red capture points at all. Yeah, so nonstop nonsense, one point over at the He's uncontested still... Henge has kind of just been racking up from this whole game. Uh, we got 31 points for Denial and 78 for nonstop nonsense, all due to that one point. But Conrad Crest was able to get mine right back and we're back to this long drawn out fight at mid. Whoever gets this is definitely going to have a uh, huge point advantage because it looks like almost all the fights mid are probably going to be a while this game. Yep, and we also see the Hellseth pop that portal down. I think that's just the exit. Um, he does have the. Actually, no, there is a portal somewhere else that it was used to heal up and really get people in and out of the fight and cycle them in and out. Uh, looks like Freelino was able to keep them occupied. Earlier, we saw a line of warding go down and a pushback from him. Very key. Uh, control from Freilina now and it looks like uh, uh, Denshi is really really low and Conrad actually did get the back cap on mine he's actually probably gonna be able to get a full cap right here as well so they do have both side points even with this going on uh, they're doing really good in the middle Denshi is down right now on his warrior and they do need a little bit of backup to get this back in, but Denshi was able to get right back up, and they're going to continue this fight with backup. That's right, Sean. Keep fight is still going, and you know it's kind of forced Blue to really condense here, and they haven't been able to mobilize. However, with Hellseth, with um, with uh, I'm sorry, with with Fluid being able to be pretty much anywhere, you know. That mobility has sort of sealed their a little bit of a comeback here. They did have a two cap. Now they're seeing Guts move back and try and get that home point. Or for the, sorry, the, the far point for Blue. And they will get a Adira going down the mid for a non-stop nonsense. Comes back up off the rally, forcing Epley uh, to sort of get back in the fight there. And uh, Adira is just he's popping the death stride, trying to stay alive as long as possible here. He's about half health and Fluid just going in on him. Yeah, Necromancers definitely seem to be the number one target for all teams today. Uh, as soon as a Necromancer becomes a little bit vulnerable, it's like a team will just stack on top of it and apply all their cooldowns to try and take it down. And if we go over to mine point real fast, we do have Raidum who came over to support uh, Guts over here, but D Denshi is here to do some damage, and here comes Hellseth, of course. Not, uh, no late, like... A wizard arrives exactly when he intends to, and uh, that's exactly what Hellseth is. Radom actually uh, pushed back. Look at that. He was interrupted and pushed back, allowing Denshi to get up uh, of that spawn. Guts coming in to backstab on Hellseth, but Hellseth will have none of it. Warps away really fast, and this fight is just now starting. Denshi, though, he will get dropped down to the down state. We'll see if Hellseth can get him up or not. I don't think he will be able to before Radom gets the stomp in, and Hellseth uh, actually... Radom did get inter uh, get interrupted. Here comes Vanish, though. They're going to go into the 3v2 here on mine, Sean. And this is Radom. Actually, he might get dropped soon. Yeah, Radom not having good luck with those stomps right there. Getting interrupted every time he wants to go in. Denshi did get interrupted right there during the stomp, so he is going to be in the down for a while. He might be able to pop back up if he chooses. He yep, he does pop up right there. Uh, and so he's going to be able to fight for a little bit. He actually, I think he rallied off Denshi's death right there. So he was able to rally off that death even through his uh, passive down skill right there. So they're going to be able to, he's going to be able to hold on to this for a little bit longer, but Hellsith and Vanish are doing really good at pressuring him. That's right, Hellsith did come in and stomp out Guts very effectively, and he's just flying around here using that blink skill, using all of his Mesmer abilities to sort of just wreak havoc on Radom, and there he's going to drop down and need to double stomp him. Uh, so, yep, there it is. He was invulnerable through that interrupt, so the Dolyak stomp will come out. Red Team will finally get this point, but meanwhile, nonstop nonsense, they sent Epilin to get Henge, and he was able to do so, but so now everything's sort of reset. We're going to see Red Team uh, taking their home point very soon, and then Hellseth, the mobile one, will get get through to the mid and be able to start fighting on this team's side here in the mid fight. But it's worth noting that uh, Nasa Abnata is now pushing back in the mid. We're forced back to the top of the staircase here and Conrad Quest with his spirits able to just stay, keep everyone alive, res people who are dropping and just be really, really survivable, survivable rather. And Syrup, look how close these points are. This game has just been extremely close almost this whole time. And if you open up the actual point menu, you'll see that 
uh, the points aren't even that far. It's not like one team has just been getting kills and kills and kills. It's been all to captures that have been keeping this game pretty close. If we check out Guts though, right now on mine point, able to decap, and if they get this capture, Nonstop Nonsense will have a three cap capturing all three points, and oh my god, that is just so. Uh, seal, it'll just seal the dominance for non-stop nonsense and just more stomps are going through. Adira did get killed off here in the mid, but we do see the rest of his teammates are having not, uh, not having much of a problem staying alive. Connor Quest, though, may be proving me wrong as he does get pushed back. He's going to try and heal. He does get it off, but he's being targeted down by Helseth, and I vanish, and it looks like everything will be going in the side of... Uh, not some nonsense for now. We'll see if the team comes back in once uh, once we do see Fluid come back in this fight after capping the back point there. Yeah, that was great by Guts. He was actually able to Basilisk up. Uh, he Basilisk teleported up and he got Hellsith down. It shouldn't click. He was trying to cleave bodies, uh, but they're able to get Hellsith up. But Vanish is down. Denshi is down. Guts is doing so much damage right here. And there's a stomp from Epoly on to, on to Vanish. Looks like Denshi, will he get burned out from this uh, from the utility, from the warrior skill? Not going to be sure, and yeah, he's going to go down. So that's just another two people from the side of Denial it stomped out there, really. Hellset is trying to cross at the beach, or actually, what is he trying to do? I think he's kind of... He's being a little bit indecisive of where he wants to go here. And now we're going to see blue team going for the Chieftain because they're already dominant. Why not be more dominant? They're going to get the buff. They're going to get the instant amount of points. So there's Guts, and we do see, I think it was Adira here who initiated the fight. So as long as, oh no, here comes Helseth. Helseth is trying to get a steal off. And if this is, if he gets this, he could, oh my god, he does get the yeah. steal off. He does. He suicides through four members of blue team. He's able to get in there. He's able to kill it with the mind wrap and take down the buff, get the 25 points for his team, a little bit of catch up as well as that buff for them. And, and now you have their whole team pushing a hand right here as well. Yeah, it distracted Blue enough for Red to come in. Denial able to just come in here and get the decap off. Now Hellseth is going to try and support Fluid over here against Radom in the mid. And then of course a 2v1 with uh, against a Sphere Ranger and a Mesmer can easily shatter you down. And of course, uh, we'd like to give a shout out to Chris Pocket, who's just is really a nice guy, came in here, allowed us to do this sort of stuff to bring you this great content for Guild Wars 2. And uh, we're going to see uh, Red actually being forced off point at Hen, Sean. Uh, what sort of rotation um, ability does Blue have here if they do take Henge? Uh, Blue gets Henge, I wouldn't be surprised to see a back cap to mine. They're all going to be respawning. They, they have mid secured. So there's not many other options right now. Uh, actually, Red, I, I eat my words. They actually got Red on. So Hells is going to get this capture on mid right here. But I, yeah, Guts did push towards mine. He's able to get the decap. Con or fluids coming in right now. Hellseth might portal and push towards it as well. And this game's just all over the place, Cyrus. Yeah, Guts is going to have to defend himself against Hellseth. Or, that's not Hellseth, that's a pet named Hellseth. Against Fluid, uh, right now, it's, this Ranger pressure on Guts will, will probably keep him occupied, but Adira's coming up to help. Meanwhile, at Henge, we do see Freilina vanish and. Uh, and Denshi over here, really wreaking havoc on Nonstop Nonsense on their home point, really getting so much of their attention, and this is how they should come back. They really need to keep this spread really effectively. Hellseth is going to come here, he's going to cut off Guts. Let's go in with Hellseth, Sean, as he sort of goes in on the on this home point of his, and Guts is going to get sandwiched here between, uh, between um, not Denshi, but Fluid and Hellseth. <laughs> so that endurance regeneration right there, you just saw Guts dodging over and over and over again. And he was able to dodge almost everything else that was throwing at him. He just gets that nice escape and he'll probably even be able to get this decap. I don't he think will. he's going to be able to stay here and hold it though. But uh, it's definitely, actually, now that Hell is by himself, there might be a little bit of even fight right here. Uh, yeah, Hellseth is actually back almost to full health. He's gonna, he might start recapping it here. Meanwhile, let's check out Mine Sean as we do see uh, Fluid is up going up against the Deli Adira, which is a Adira right on that on that Necro there. He's in the the Plague form, which allows him to have that stability and just really do so many conditions by just standing next to people. And Hellseth actually might have some trouble soon because Radom's trying to come up here and he's gonna be met with guts. So it's gonna be a two v one, but he does have the capture point. Meanwhile, the rest of his team gets Henge and Blue has no income, so they're gonna actually catch up in the next few seconds yeah and the warrior against the mesmer it uh, guts actually went down but normally you see the warrior and the thief work so well together with the warrior cc and the, the thief damage the problem was guts went down before radon could actually get in there and lock them down
Yep, and now we do see Denshi. <laughs> he's, he's trying to stack some might here, but unfortunately he's getting burned down by the same skill from Radom. We see a warrior and warrior skill uh, right now. Epile joining the fight, and here comes Vanish. So we're going to see another 2v2 at mid here. Let's see what sort of goes down we do, as we do see the sort of combinations of skills here. Epile, though, he's going to be he has the ability to stack might with that empower. He's got so much stuff going on, Sean. What sort of, of skill combos can we see coming out here? So Denshi's actually going down extremely quick, but he, he is able to stay up. Just that might is really, really going to help Vanish. If he's able to get the lockdown with the hammer skills, Vanish is able to do so much damage uh, with his with sword-dagger combination. But yeah, he does go down. He's taking a lot of damage there. The... Uh, the Shadow Refuge did come out from, uh, from I Vanish You, though, and... Uh, he was able to keep Denshi alive for just a few seconds longer, allowing Freilina to come on the point before Blue could start capping it. But the stomp from Epilin interrupted, interrupted again. Uh, we'll see if the third time is the charm. No, he gets pushed back, and the stomp's just not coming out. Vanish gets up, and he will rally. Radom is just staying on point. So Blue and Red are going to be butting heads once again here. The line of warning comes out from Epilin. She will empower. She'll get Might off, but I think Radom was outside of the radius of that, so he won't have the Might there. He's going to drop. Vanish is going in. Will he DPS? No, he'll get re Resolute Healer away. Radom are you going to get up? Yes, there's another rally here in the mid fight. Let's check out the mine as we do see uh, this is fluid and there is a portal here for for um, Denshi and everyone to sort of come back into once Helseth lays it down. I think Helseth's over here on Henge and he's going to do that, allowing Blue to sort of, uh, sorry, for Denial to sort of come back and forth on whatever point they so choose. And that's a stomp on fluid for the side of Blue. So it looks like Nonstop Nonsense is actually going to be able to get this mine point as well. This game is so back and forth, and Nonstop Nonsense had a fantastic lead earlier on with that three point cap. <laughs> uh, Denial was able to come back, but now Nonstop Nonsense almost has this 2 to 0 point advantage. This is going to be a very, very close game. Uh, they're actually taking out Denshi right here. Oh, sorry, Denshi is dead. Vanish extremely low, has to retreat, has to go back towards mid or towards Henge. So they're going to have both, Nonstop Nonsense is going to have both side points right here. They're only down 30 points now, 417 to 391. This game is going to cut it close. There's only 50 seconds left on this clock. And this is, oh my god, Red really needs to get a capture point, maybe even take some of those forest creatures just to have the... the, the match point, uh, the uh, lead in points here, because this game might end just on the timer. I think that, you know, Fluid realizes this, but behind him, we may have some blue. No, the blue team is crossing over to Henge. If he can get this Chieftain kill right now, he'll put himself ahead of this team, but uh, the, the team fight is now cycling back to Henge. Adira Guts is quite low. Heading. Guts is heading into Chieftain right now. He's going to try and steal it. If he's able to steal this, this is absolutely going to secure. Whoever gets this pretty much wins right here. Oh my god, oh there my it is god. for Denial, they're up 40, 47 points, they need another point, they need a capture point, or then about like, two seconds, they're gonna lose their lead here, and in five seconds, this is, this is it, this is it, it's going to be in the side of non-stop nonsense if they don't get a kill, or if they don't die, there it is, game one. They won by four points right now. The timer just ticking down. <laughs> Denial is able to get that last point buff, but with nonstop nonsense holding both side points, those points just ticking up was able to take the victory for them. That's right, Sean. Amazing game. So close, so clutch. Just, wow, I need to take a breath there. That The timer game, you know, counting down from the, the 15 uh, minutes, we rarely see the 15 minutes actually expire. Generally, the games end around like, I don't know, 12, 10 minutes in. That, whenever it ends, it's such an amazing game to see. Yeah, that game was so close, almost a little time. And if you looked at the scoreboard, it's not like there was a huge point difference. Like, they were almost neck and neck. They were getting even kills. They were getting even points. That game just stayed so close the whole time. And pretty much all because that mid fight was so long in the beginning. It took so much effort for one team to just get that capture point there. That's so right, Blue. Sort of, man, everything we saw. Helseth's mobility, Helseth's ability to get in, in anywhere. Guts's mobility and almost sealing that last kill. What do you think of that, man? I, I really think that's what ended up making the lead for either team there as we progressed throughout that game. We saw those side caps constantly going off. We saw Guts. I think Guts was mainly the driving force, and that's why we ended up seeing nonstop nonsense come up with the point lead towards the end there. But Helseth as well was doing that quite a lot, always rushing for that side point, trying to avoid the main bulk of the team fight, whatever it may have been, and go for that third point. And I think because because those team fights were pretty stalemated for that entire game, that that, those side points, those those 1v1s on those side points would end up making the leads towards the end of that game. And that's why we ended up seeing uh, NN take the lead there. 
That's absolutely right. So guys, we're going to go into game two momentarily, but we're going to go into a quick commercial break first. Don't forget to start tweeting who you think is going to win this. Is it denial? Is it nonstop nonsense? We'll have to see in the next game. This is match point for uh, for nonstop nonsense. Or for yeah, for nonstop nonsense. Will denial be able to come back? Of course, we see a lot of crazy stuff for them on uh, on faux fire here. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this commercial break.